Some doctors urge people with congestive heart failure to stay away from alcohol, especially in large amounts. But you know, there are a lot of stories floating around about the health benefits of drinking too, right? Is it true that a glass of wine every day keeps the doctor away? Alcohol, particularly red wine, is thought to be beneficial to the heart. However, the truth isn't quite so simple. Hi, how are you? We hope you're having a great day. Welcome to Scope Care, where we talk about health tips and other information to make your lifestyle better, healthier, and happier. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell. This way, you'll get updated on our future uploads. It would also be nice if you give this video a like and share it with your friends. There is a lot that you should know about the relationship between alcohol and congestive heart failure, so make sure to stick around. Moderate alcohol consumption has been linked to a lower risk of dying from heart disease in some studies. However, determining cause and effect from that research is difficult. Those who drink red wine may have better earnings, which are linked to more education and access to healthier meals. Red wine drinkers may also be more likely to follow a heart-healthy diet. There's some evidence that drinking modest amounts of alcohol can help raise good HDL cholesterol levels. Red wine, in particular, has been suggested by researchers to protect the heart due to the antioxidants it contains. A great deal of study has been done on the relationship between alcohol and heart health with mixed results. According to many studies, moderate drinking reduces the chance of dying from heart disease. A 12-ounce beer, a 6-ounce glass of wine, or a 1.2-ounce shot of whiskey is considered one drink. Moderate drinking, according to other studies, can marginally raise levels of good HDL cholesterol. Alcohol also appears to reduce the risk of blood clots, which can contribute to heart attacks and strokes, according to Brown. You don't need to pop a cork, though, to reap the benefits. Antioxidants can be found in meals, including fruits, vegetables, and grape juice, and exercise can help raise HDL cholesterol levels. It's debatable if modern drinking is good for your heart. However, alcohol does not appear to be hazardous to the heart in most people, but the crucial term is moderate, which is defined as one drink per day for women and one or two for males. 12 ounces of beer, four ounces of wine, or one and a half ounces of 80 proof spirits may be less than you think. If you have certain heart rhythm disorders or heart failure, you should avoid even that much alcohol and not drink at all. Heavy drinking, on the other hand, has been related to a variety of health problems, including heart disease. Drinking too much alcohol can cause excessive blood pressure, heart failure, and stroke. Cardiomyopathy, a condition affecting the heart muscle, can be exacerbated by excessive drinking. Furthermore, alcohol can contribute to obesity, as well as a slew of other health issues that come with it. Alcohol is a calorie-rich beverage that can lead to weight gain, which can be hazardous in the long run. The takeaway is fairly obvious. If you choose to drink alcohol, limit yourself to moderate amounts and don't overdo it. Keep in mind that living a healthy lifestyle and eating nutritious food is essential for avoiding heart disease and the risk of cardiovascular disease. Let's get more into the link between alcohol use and congestive heart failure, also known as CHF, as well as the evidence around the dangers of consuming alcohol. Before we go on with the discussion, what do you think of this relationship so far? And have you tried moderate drinking before? Let us know in the comments below. Next up is CHF. It's a disorder in which the heart does not pump blood as efficiently as it should, causing blood to back up or get congested within the heart. An enlarged heart, shortness of breath, and palpitations are all symptoms of this dangerous ailment, which doctors sometimes refer to simply as heart failure. Kidney failure is also a possibility. Heart failure affects around 6 million people in the United States. It is also the most prevalent cause of hospitalization in people over the age of 65, according to Johns Hopkins Medicine. 
Heavy drinking, according to research, can harm the structure and function of the heart before symptoms appear. Drinking every day, according to the American Heart Association, can lead to major cardiovascular disease risk factors such as high blood pressure, obesity, hypertriglyceridemia, and stroke. Alcoholic cardiomyopathy can occur in those who abuse alcohol for a long time. Alcohol poisoning damages the heart muscle, resulting in this type of heart failure. Although little study has been done on the impact of moderate drinking pertaining to the risk of CHF, Johns Hopkins cardiologist Stephen Jones, MD, believes that maintaining a healthy lifestyle can help prevent other heart diseases. A healthy lifestyle, according to doctors, includes being careful about alcohol consumption, extra calories, and appropriate physical activity. According to a review of the evidence published in the Nursing Times, there is very little study on the impact of alcohol on people who have heart failure. Although scientists do not fully comprehend how alcohol causes heart failure, the analysis shows that alcohol-induced hypertension and the production of stress hormones known as catecholamines may compound the detrimental effects on the heart. Alcohol can also be harmful to the heart in the short term. While the same evaluation recommends complete abstinence from alcohol for patients with alcoholic cardiomyopathy, it also points out that the absence of conclusive evidence on alcohol and heart failure limits the guidance that health professionals can give. Heart failure can be chronic, which is also known as chronic or acute heart failure, and is also known as abrupt heart failure. Here are some of the indications and symptoms of heart failure. Let's say when you are active or lying down, you may sometimes experience shortness of breath. You may feel weak and exhausted most of the time. Your legs, ankles, and feet may somehow be swollen. Your heartbeat may be faster or irregular. Your exercise ability is hampered. You may experience constant coughing or wheezing that is persistent with white or pink blood-tinged mucus. There may also be swelling of the abdomen or belly. Fluid retention may also be present, which causes fast weight gain. You may also experience nausea and an inability to eat. There will be problems with concentration problems or a lack of alertness. If heart failure is triggered by a heart attack, you may experience chest pain. If you think you're showing signs or symptoms of heart failure, see your doctor. Call 911 or seek immediate medical assistance. Although heart failure may be the source of these signs and symptoms, there are many other possibilities, including potentially life-threatening heart and lung disorders. Do not attempt to diagnose yourself. Doctors in the emergency room will attempt to stabilize your health while determining if your symptoms are caused by heart failure or something else. If you've been diagnosed with heart failure and any of your symptoms suddenly worsen or you develop a new sign or symptom, your existing heart failure may be worsening or not responding to therapy. Heart failure generally occurs after the heart has been injured or weakened by other disorders. Heart failure, on the other hand, can develop if the heart gets excessively rigid. The major pumping chambers of the heart known as the ventricles may stiffen and fail to fill correctly between beats during heart failure. The heart muscle can be injured and weakened in some people. The ventricles may enlarge to the point where the heart is unable to adequately pump blood throughout the body. The heart can no longer keep up with the normal demands placed on it to pump blood to the rest of the body as time passes. By measuring how much blood is pumped out with each beat, your doctor can evaluate how well your heart is pumping or what they refer to as ejection fraction. Ejection fraction is a metric that is used to classify and treat heart failure. The ejection fraction of a healthy heart is 50% or greater, which means that each beat pumps out more than half of the blood that fills the ventricle. However, even with a normal ejection fraction, heart failure can occur. This happens when the heart muscle stiffens as a result of diseases like high blood pressure. The left, right, or both sides of your heart can be affected by heart failure. Heart failure usually starts on the left side, notably in the left ventricle, 
which is your heart's main pumping chamber. Reducing your risk factors is the key to preventing heart failure. Many of the risk factors for heart disease can be reduced or eliminated by following a healthy lifestyle and taking the medications prescribed by your doctor. Not smoking, controlling certain conditions such as high blood pressure and diabetes, staying physically active, eating healthy foods, maintaining a healthy weight, reducing and managing stress, and of course, moderate to no drinking at all are all lifestyle changes that can help prevent heart failure. Alcohol can lead to an increase in calorie consumption, which can contribute to weight gain and hypertension, a risk factor for heart disease. If someone is concerned about their alcohol use or wants to know if they can drink alcohol while suffering from heart failure, they should consult a doctor, especially if they are on medication. How about you? Is your heart okay today? Or maybe you need some wine to be fine. If you know other ways to prevent congestive heart disease, comment down below and let's talk about it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you get updated for our future uploads. Again, this is Scope Care, and we will see you soon in our next video. Thanks for watching.